Hey everyone, and welcome back to Sports Design School. Today we're continuing our popular series, the Sports Design School Playoff. We've got an awesome head-to-head -head creative battle between Ryan Warford and Ben Westlake. You definitely don't want to miss out on this. Just a quick reminder, please like the video. It helps get this video in front of more people, more creatives just like yourself, and helps to spread the Sports Design School message. And as always, if you aren't subscribed already, please subscribe. But with that quick promo out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the head-to-head -head battle between Ben and Ryan. And now here is Ben Westlake. Now Ben is a super talented designer and I really enjoyed checking out his designs in the first round. I'll go ahead and throw that up so you can preview it real quick. But Ben over on his Instagram says he is the director of graphic design at Harvard football. So very cool, very honored to have him as part of our sports design school playoff. I'm super excited to see what he came up with. So let's just jump in. So you can see here, we're starting with a few different images and I could be wrong, but I think this is in Lightroom, similar to what uh, I believe it was Jake did for his videos. Uh, he did, he hopped into Lightroom first before jumping in to the rest of his design. Uh, it's a unique workflow that I think I've thought about trying out a couple of times, but I mean, I pretty much just use camera raw filter within Photoshop and I find it does a pretty good job. Now we have a few different images here. Again, every single round I send out video or I send out images for people to use. Uh, and it's just in like a Google Drive folder. So I send like probably maybe like eight or nine different photos that I find that are high resolution images and I send them over to them. But I said at the start of the competition and I continue to say each round, people are welcome to use whatever images they like. Um, anything off of Google, anything off of Getty or wherever you want to pull your images from, you're more than welcome to do that. And really the whole premise of this competition is just like, it's, I try to mirror it as much as like a real work environment would be working in sports design. Like a lot of times when I'm working on projects and stuff for work, the way it actually comes about is it's not like, hey, will you make this look a certain way? It's, hey, we have this announcement that's coming up and we need you to create a graphic for that announcement. Or we have this cool recognition that's coming up and we need to create something for that. And then as the graphic designer, as the creative you have the ability to kind of mess around with it in whatever way you would like to, to come up with your own take on it. And of course you want it to fit within the brand standards. You want it to feel like it's part of the brand that you've already been building. You want it to look similar to all the other designs that you do, but really you have that creative leeway, at least in my creative experience. And so with that, I kind of had the same approach with the prompt for this round is literally just, Hey, you have the full creative, um, rights to do whatever you would like to so feel free to play around with it and so it's been a real pleasure to see these guys play around with different images play around with different fonts and textures and really come up with something that stands out so it looks like we're going through and cutting out tiger woods with the pen tool here i'm a big pen tool guy i just think it is the best way to cut out players people debate all the time on twitter whether it's like pen tool or quick select or whatever and it's like who cares as long as it gets the job done, to be honest, whatever one works for you works for you. Um, but I find like when I'm doing billboards or other designs that require like really big blown up detail and you really want it to look polished, I find that like quick select, sometimes you can have like, I mean, I know there's a way to do it to where it's perfect, but I just think it takes so much more time to get it pixel perfect in the way you want to where pen tool, it might take more time up front, but you know, it's going to look good. Uh, and it will just like work out from that point on. So I really, I try to use that as much as possible. Now again, when I'm designing for this channel and stuff, it's not as high stakes. So I probably just use, to be honest, I've been using like the uh, image select tool where it just kind of selects, selects the cutout for you, which has been huge. I mean, it's been a game changer. That'll be one of those things that'll be really cool to see, especially in the next like three to four years, how much that technology develops because imagine how much like more creative leeway you would have if you were just able to like go in automatically cut out something 
in like a matter of seconds and then go and just create and there's no process behind it other than just creating. So it looks like he has a black and white filter applied and we're just going through and painting on all the areas that we want to turn black and white. This is the best way to do it. I've seen different people try to like cut off portions of the arm and then make that black and white and then whatever, whatever. This is by far the best way to do the black and white effect. I also really love the way that the black and white contrasts with the red. When you have that bright red like Tiger does on his Sunday uh, shirt, it really stands out and really is a nice contrast. So it looks like we just have that cut out done. And then it looks like we're pairing that with our just background image just to have just for whatever. It's nice sometimes you want to like keep the yeah, keep the ground like he is here. Very cool. I'm definitely curious to check out some of men's designs with Harvard football. Actually, this is one of the things that's interesting. When I was in the process of applying to colleges uh, a, a couple of years back or a few years back, um, part of my master plan to try and get into schools was I emailed all of the football coaches at some like really competitive universities. So I emailed like Princeton and Harvard and Penn and Stanford and all these other schools. And I basically like just said, hey, I do football graphic design because I had done it for my high school and emailed them and was like, are you willing to like bring me on to the team, blah, 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 blah. And they all like I, I was so surprised at how many, especially with like those smaller schools like Penn or Princeton doesn't have like this huge built out infrastructure of like designers and everything that Alabama has. And so they're really looking for student employees and stuff. There's not a huge selection. At least there wasn't when I was applying all those years ago. And so my hope was that like they'd be able to help me to get into those schools. Unfortunately, that isn't what happened. Um, but they definitely said like, hey, if you get into school, like send me an email and we'll hook you up with a position, which was really cool. So I knew like applying to colleges and stuff, I had a few different jobs lined up had I gotten into those schools, which is really awesome. So now we have our second cutout done here. And it looks like we're doing the same kind of black and white effect. Just like that. And I'm really liking the way he's playing around with the brightness and contrast. And now we are scaling that up. Now it's been interesting to see because like I give everyone like the same pool of images and some people use some of the images I have, some people use a lot of the images I have, then some people don't use any. Um, but the images I had, there was not really a clear like way to lay them out on a page that makes it like look super good. Like they're not necessarily like, oh, this one is an obvious, you put this on the right side. This is obvious, you put this on the left side. They're all like different images and different whatever. What also is interesting to me is I included a few like vintage Tiger Woods, like from like 1993, some early stuff. And um, not 1993, like 1997 and stuff like that. And no one has used those, uh, which I mean, I guess maybe that's just the way to go. I just thought that it might be interesting, especially there are so many. I was thinking like my idea for this design was uh, like there's that image of Tiger hugging his son after he won the last Masters. And if you go back to when Tiger won, I think it was like his third or fourth Masters, uh, his dad was like battling cancer or something. And he had just recently won, like he had won the Masters just a few days before. And as he was walking off the green on the 18th hole, um, he and his dad like hugged. And his dad, I think, ended up passing away just like a few months later or a few days later. I can't remember. Uh, so I was thinking that could have been a cool parallel design. Maybe one of you guys can take that and tackle it. So we're going through and cutting out this trophy. Very cool. And like parts like this where it's kind of metallic-y on a white background, it's so hard to cut out because you don't know where one thing starts and one thing stops. So you're really just guessing. That 
that's kind of been one thing that's always interesting is like when you're doing a cutout of like someone's arm and like they're wearing like black long sleeves or something like that and it's like like a dark background and you're literally or like there's real like a lot of shadows and stuff and you're trying to figure out where their arm stops and when like the background starts and like you're trying to cut out an arm and like at some point you're basically just drawing on a person's arm and like estimating their arm size which is kind of weird so I'm really like in Ben's process here doing everything the way I would 100% do it the pen tool I think is the right call in this situation This is a quick reminder, if you're enjoying the uh, SDS playoff so far and enjoying the kind of stuff we're putting out here, make sure you drop a like on the video. Uh, it really helps. The more people we can get kind of watching these videos, the more I'll definitely want to do them in the future. I know I had talked about doing like a 64 person playoff if we get that many people. Um, and I think that could really be awesome. But the best way to get that would probably just be to like the video and subscribe if you aren't already. And then if we can get up to a certain number of subscribers, um, let's just say, I don't know, 3,000, um, I'll definitely do a 64-person playoff. Or at least try to. That might be hard to coordinate. And then also, like I said, if you're not subscribed already, make sure you subscribe because uh, we got some awesome videos coming out. Like I... I'm so excited for some of the stuff we're putting out here soon. I think you guys are really going to like it. Uh, kind of taking a step past just doing tutorials and stuff. Not that we won't, like, no longer do any tutorials. Like, we definitely will do a good bit of tutorials coming forward. But, like, I have some, trying to get some interviews and stuff with people that work in sports design. Um, some people that, like, are established players in the industry having them come on an interview maybe do tutorials on their own so that might be something cool that you guys uh, might look forward to in the future so subscribe so you don't miss out on those so it looks like we're going through and adding some color correction to these Tiger Woods graphics these cu Tiger Woods cutouts And I'm really liking the way these are looking. I think this looks pretty sharp. Another question I do want to ask for Ben is like, what kind of display are you designing this on? It looks massive. Is this like a desktop? I think it might be. Doing some shadows on the feet. And it looks like the color correction that he kind of applied is like a gold color correction. So it almost looks like he's a trophy, which is kind of cool. Looks like we're trying to center up everything. Yeah, I'm really liking the way he did the, he kept the floor not the floor, like the grass of the original cutout, like that front cutout that he has. I think it's like a nice, it makes it feel more cohesive, I think. And we're keeping on with the color correction, doing, keeping up with the gold theme that we're going with. Adding some curves and playing around with it. And I'm really liking the way this is looking so far. I think it's very cool. I don't know, man. These these last few rounds, I mean, these last two rounds are going to be tough because these people are all super talented designers and they really put out some awesome, high quality work. So it'll be really interesting to see just kind of like what they come up with and how the voting goes. Because I truly believe like looking at all these designers, there's not one that sticks out like far ahead any of the other ones. They're all very talented. Also, still in search of a prize for the winner, so comment your prize ideas down in the description or in the comments. So, we're tweaking the brightness and contrast on this front image. Really, just trying to hone all of the different elements 
in terms of color correction. I really do like the tiger background image. And now we're going through and it looks like we're adding a a white brush over or no, it looks like we're adding in yep some highlights over to his arms not a white brush it's a gold brush correction to match the color correction just going through and adding some outer some outer stroke not outer stroke but you, you know what I'm meaning inner glow that's the word we're going for And it's good to do this by hand because like this stuff can be pretty particular if you want it to look like pretty realistic. Like certain areas have more glow than others um, just based on like how material is and whatnot when they're backlit like that. There's a lot of like science in the actual design part. If you're like trying to get the same effect like pretty quickly, what I find is like when you have a cutout, just double click do an inner glow, set the glow to like a white or a light color, um, and then set your blending mode, I think it's to like linear light or vivid light, and then play around with the opacity on that, and it really does look like it's like a natural backlit effect depending on how much you play around with. You don't want to overdo it because when you overdo it, it looks so bad, um, but just like doing a subtle effect, I think it adds a nice touch. Now we're going through and adding more kind of outlines, inner glows. This is one of those things, man, like this will really test you like how steady your fingers are when you're, like it's easier to do it if you have like a Wacom tablet or like a whatever, but like when you're doing this on like a trackpad or like on a mouse and like every time you shake your finger, like it kind of bounces off a little bit, it's tough. So it'll really test you for sure. And it looks like going through and continuing to add these inner glows. And it looks like, and I could be wrong, maybe I missed it, but it seems like the exposure is turned up a little bit more than what it was. Like it seems like everything is a little bit more exposed and maybe he did that with this curves adjustment that he has right there. There's definitely ways to tweak it, but. And going through with a color lookup. And this is a really cool kind of overlay. Yeah, that's very cool. And I guess he got he got rid of it. See, I think it's like, it really brings in your focus, that one overlay that he had. Now it looks like we're bringing in some dust and some scratches. Ben, if you're out there, send me that cool like holographic circle overlay because I thought it was sick. And yeah, you can tell this color correction is really starting to shine. It really is standing out with the way he's done it so far. Ben's bringing it this round. He's really stepping up his game. I think this looks awesome. Working on the positioning. And then we have Tiger Woods. And it'll be interesting to see what kind of font he goes with. He said script font is what he's looking for. Or black letter font handwritten font. So he's looking for some different types. It looks like we're going with, okay, we changed our mind again. I feel like with a design like this, I, I might go with like a more classic font. Almost like a Times New Roman. But it looks like he has this, looks very much like a golf font 
to be honest, if you had to like pick out a font and say that font looks like it belongs in a golf graphic, I would probably pick one of these fonts. Adding the Tiger Woods logo. When I was a kid, I begged my parents to get a Tiger Woods hat like that with the little logo on it. Congratulations on retirement, Tiger Woods. It truly will be sad the day that a lot of these legends in sports hang up their cleats for the last time. I mean, imagine LeBron James and Tom Brady no longer playing. I mean, that's unfortunate. Going through and playing around with the brightness and contrast and the curve some more. I'm really liking the way that he's playing around with some of these filters. And that that's it. And so let me go back to this last graphic real quick and we can kind of check out what the design is and break it down a little bit more so you can see here he really ran with the gold theme he ran with a cool like color correction theme and I love the tiger texture and or not texture tiger image in the background I think the pattern itself just really brings the design together and is a nice subtle detail all in all I think the way he went through his color correction and added like the inner glows and stuff like that. It was awesome seeing his process. I really enjoyed kind of watching Ben go through his work and I think he did an awesome job. Um, so this is just a reminder, say a quick thanks down to Ben in the comments. Uh, we really appreciate him taking the time to put this together for the sports design school playoff. He did an awesome job. And now we'll head over to Ryan Morford and see what he has got going on. And now we move on to Ryan Warford. Now Ryan is an awesomely talented designer. He seriously has lots of design skill. It's very clear scrolling through his Instagram. I mean, some of his designs, his Kentucky designs, his De'Aaron Fox designs, lots of awesome stuff. I really enjoyed his Trevor Lawrence design that he did in the last round. I'll go ahead and throw that up so you guys can check that out. But I love the way that he used the uh, Jaguar in the background with the teal eyes. And then he also used the Jaguar kind of in between I think it was just a really good way of encompassing Jacksonville in general. A little bit about Ryan. He says he's from Louisville, Kentucky. Shout out to Louisville. Uh, good for you. Um, Ryan is also the, I mentioned this before, I think in the first round, but he was the first subscriber to Sports Design School. Um, so big shout out to him for that. It's crazy how far we've come. Almost at 2,000 subscribers now, potentially over 2,000 subscribers by the time you see this video. But big shout out to him. Unfortunately, he had some issues where he went through and I think he was recording his design or recording his design process and then put together his design. And then something happened with the recording and it messed up. And instead of having him redo the entire thing, he just sent me a quick kind of breakdown of all of his different layers and stuff like that. So all I'm going to do is just play this video that he sent me of him kind of clicking through his layers. I might kind of go through and kind of talk through what's going on and then I'll show the design and talk a little bit more about that. So let's jump in. So it looks like he starts off with this beach kind of background. He has a tiger overlay in the back, a red rectangle with a tiger pattern a Nike logo, pretty simple to do. It looks like we have a Tiger Woods image, one of the cutouts, or one of the images I sent over. And it looks like he applied a camera raw filter. And some of his camera raw filters effects, he went through and edited the blacks and the white values. He went through and played around with some of the color and the saturation, very cool. Just really honing in on the image itself and making it look great. And then it looks like he played around with some of the different things. So it looks like he added some black and white maybe to his eyes, I'm not sure. And then added a levels, which I love doing levels for sure. And really just honed in on some of the details in his image. He then added some curves to Big Tiger, is what he labeled his layer that's kind of funny. Played around with the vibrance and whatnot. I like the way he did his color fill for the highlights. I think that's a really unique approach. 
added another color fill. So it's interesting, instead of doing rectangles, he, he's doing color fills, which is definitely, I mean, you can do it that way. And then we have our front Tiger Woods cut out, which I think it's placed very nicely. I love the way it kind of overlaps with the kind of, I don't know, is that grass? Would you call that grass? The bushes, maybe? I'm not very in on beach culture, as you can imagine. Adding some more color fills. Really honing in on the sunlight in the background and really bringing that into the front cutout to blend it a lot. And then we're adding some retiring text and some more kind of descriptions on his accolades. Interesting font choice for sure. Going through and adding some faraway birds this is a nice subtle detail. That's a cool thing. I love when you add like small little things in the background that really bring the design together. We have the autograph. Now we're going through and adding some levels and some color balance. and really just kind of tuning our image. It looks like none of these are super drastic changes, just really bringing in some nice color. Now I know this is kind of going pretty quickly, but if you want to see it for yourself, you're welcome to pause it at any time you'd like to. And now it looks like we're taking all of our image and going through and continuing to play around with camera raw filter adding some grain and some vignette around the corners. It looks like we have some dust overlays that we're applying and then a final color correction on top. And that looks like it's everything. So I'll pull up his final design so we can just kind of talk through what we're going for or go, kind of talk through his design in general. So it looks like we have like the red rectangle on the left, the tiger in the background, the beach, and the main tiger cut out in the front. To be honest, I love the way that this beach image with tiger kind of celebrating, it looks so cool. I think it's a perfect image in terms of like encapsulating his retirement. Um, and then the retiring after 25 years text, I think that is definitely there. Um, and then the autograph on top, another nice detail. I like the tiger stripes a little bit on the left side over the red rectangle, and then we also have the goat text right below that. All in all, a sharp design. I love the small details that he added throughout the process, and I think it's a really awesome design, again, from Ryan Warford. But that's it, guys. That is the head-to-head -head for this round. Head down to the link in the description and vote for your favorite, whether it be Ben Westlake or Ryan Warford. As a reminder, the winner of this round will go on to compete in the Sports Design School Playoff Championship game. Um, and I'm excited to see who that will be. I'll probably announce those results sometime next week with one more video. But super excited to see what comes out of that. I truly have no idea. I mean, both of these designs were so sharp. Uh, and I think it'll be a very close call indeed. But that being said, if you enjoyed watching this video and want to see more of these, drop a like. That's the best way that I know that this video and this content is good for you guys and I need to continue putting more into this. Um, and it, again, if you're not subscribed already, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We have lots of awesome content coming your way very soon. But other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.